You're watching Sky Sports. Nike Live, brought to you by NikeFootball.com. Yeah, but why don't you talk to us when you've got something to say? Yeah, good, I look forward to it. Muppet. Great match the other day. Yeah. How's the house? Okay. It's a bit of a trek from the training ground though, so um, I thought helicopter. A red one. White blades. Fly the colours. <laughs> what happened to Mr. Nice Guy? Look, I don't want any house, any helicopter, I don't care about free car. I don't want any player of the Mono World. All I want is my own TV show. Edwards. And I'm Andy Goldstein, and tonight we're privileged to be in the presence of a living genius. Thanks, mate. No, not you. I am, of course, talking about one of the finest, bravest, most talented footballers of his generation. The awesome and inspirational Cesc Fabregas. That is right, uh, you lucky people are about to experience a whole hour dedicated to a man whose boots we're not worthy to lick. We think that Cesc Fabregas is the next step in the evolution of football. But don't just take our word for it. Have a listen to this lot. Cesc, who is Cesc? Ah, the boy of Arsenal. Footballist, no way. When I saw Cesc play for the first time, uh, I think he was only 16 or 17. In terms of football, he seemed to have the knowledge beyond his years. To get him from Barcelona is just phenomenal. Coming from Spain so young, that's a challenge for anybody. Siendo muy joven, la verdad es que es impresionante todo lo que está haciendo. He bosses midfield, no matter who he plays against. He's a player who wants to win every game. I think he's got a bit of everything. But he's been a genius today, he's been like a little magician. He sees everything that's going on before other people see it. He can do something magic. Oh! Dynamite! Absolute dynamite! He's a lot more goals than I had when I was there, so this is a lot more complex than what I was going to do. Cesc is an inspiration to all young players that are coming at Arsenal, really. I know he wants to be the best, so I'm not afraid for him. just want to be on his team all the time. With praise like that, a lesser man would have an ego the size of Derby's goal difference. But Cesc has got his feet firmly on the ground, and those feet, combined with his intellect, his courage and damned hard work, have turned a humble nine-year-old schoolboy into a footballing genius. And even now, he is still in short trousers. Along with a host of special guests, including Matt Lucas, Paul Kay, members of the Arsenal squad, past and present, and a very special guest, we're going to enjoy every aspect of his career to date, as well as looking forward to what a player with such determination, talent and skill is yet to achieve. And let's not forget our specially invited studio audience who are about to go crazy mental as we meet the man who's an inspiration to us all. It's the PFA Young Player of the Year and star of Nike Live, the Cesc Fabregas Show. It's Cesc Fabregas! <laughs> Is this kind of how you wanted it? Of course, it looks like the Emirates. Cesc, is it weird to hear your fellow professionals and former players being so complimentary? 
Of course, uh, for me, it's, it's fantastic to hear these kind of things. Uh, all I want to say is thank you very much to everyone, uh, to all the players who have been involved as well, you know, because it's always nice to hear these kind of things. And, and to all of you guys, thanks for coming as well. And to be voted best young player by your fellow professionals must be quite an honour. Yeah, it is uh, because uh, you are the one who are they are the ones who are you playing against every week, week in, week out. So they know uh, I know how difficult it is to play against them, and they know how to difficult it is to play against Arsenal. So it's also it's very exciting uh, trophy. And you've clearly had a, a great season. What have been the highlights for you personally? It's, it's difficult to say. Me personally, I'm happy how it went individually, but as a team, I'm disappointed because we didn't win anything. A club like Arsenal, I think, uh, should win a lot of trophies. We've done it in the past, and now we have to make sure that uh, all together with the fans and all the club and the players, we make it for next season because I'm sure I, and I've got the feeling that we will do it. You, uh... you heard it here first. Not Man United. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get to that in a minute. When did you first realise that you might be able to play football professionally? Did you realise or did someone else come to you and say? Uh, I was 10 years old. I was playing for a little town uh, next to mine. Um, I was lucky to be playing in the same league as Barcelona in that day. They came to see me. Uh, I, watched the, I played against them as well a few times. They called my, my family, my, my parents, and we decided to, to go and try to make like a trail or something, and they took me. Uh, now, you know, Cesc, a lot of British footballers play in Spain. I mean, mainly they play golf once they're retired. And that's obviously where you started your career. Being Spanish clearly helped. Let's have a little look and see where your story began. <laughs> was, I think, 10, 11 years old when I saw him the first time. He played at this time on Mataró. And I remember that the, uh, to the mom of him, I said, you don't know what you have at home. In the beginning, when he came to Barcelona, we agreed with Mataró that he came once a week. And the rest of the days, he will play in, in Mataró, no? Lo conocí hace 10 años. Jugábamos en el Alvin B del, del Barça. Era muy extrovertido, hacía muchas bromas. Bueno, le gustaba jugar mucho y bueno, era futbolista ya. Está formado aquí en el Barcelona, tiene las cosas que se trabajan aquí en, en la cantera. Es un jugador con muchísima calidad, que es, con el balón juega muy bien. Y se intenta inculcar también valores como persona, te hacen crecer como persona y como futbolista. Me preguntaba por la cantera, por los jugadores del fútbol base, quién prometía y él era un de ellos. Tothom deia que se semblaba pues, una mica al Pep. The first thing that that Cesc Fabregas played in Football Club Barcelona was Alevin A. For me, it's the best team that I have had. I stayed in Barcelona since 1996, and I never had a team like this, no? Bueno, si te pones triste, pero también te alegras al verlo ahora, como está triunfando. Now, we've all seen competitive dads down the wreck shouting expletives at their kids during a game. Um, even though they were, they were trying their best, actually, Dad. Um, sorry, to, uh, sorry to be a disappointment to you. I mean, yeah, was, right. Uh, uh, most mums' job in football actually involves just washing the team kit, but it seems Sesk's mother is a lot more on the ball than most mothers. Have a look at this. Cammy as insightful as ever. Unbelievable, isn't he? Well, it's half-time at the Emirates Stadium. Let's cross live now to somebody who really knows their stuff, our new Spanish correspondent. Hi, Jeff. What an atmosphere here. The Premier League at its best. What did you think of that first half performance? Absolutely classic. Match of the season stuff. But just before half-time, a cruel blow for Arsenal with a Galazon goal from a Rooney shot. And how can Arsenal turn this round? Arsenal have had more possession, but they need to make it count. Fabregas need to sort himself out, support his strikers, and Arsenal could easily get back into this. So, the final score in your expert opinion? I think it's going to be 2-2. I've got a funny feeling Fabregas, Ronaldo and Gallas, my score. Thank you, Jeff. Mature, attractive, knows her footy, cover your ears, Sask. 
She said, yummy, mummy. <laughs> Sex, do you miss your mother and father living over here? Definitely. I mean, they've been, uh, they are still a big part uh, to me, to my career, um, as a person as well. They always uh, try to help me, they talk to me, but whenever they call me every day, they ask me, are you happy? If I say yes, then they are happy as well. Well, if you want to thank them, there's no need to jump on an easy jet to see them this week, Sesk. Uh, no, that's right. With that, our next guest, we'll just be standing here talking to ourselves. It's been embarrassing. Uh, they're responsible for the very existence of Sesk and gave him the ambition to make that giant step to Arsenal. It's your mum and dad, Naria and Francesc. <laughs> Hands off, hands off. <laughs> um, Naria, good to see you. You fancy yourself as a bit of a commentator, do you? <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> uh, now, you must be very proud of your son's achievements. Well, mm, we are proud of uh, both of our children. And More we are proud happy. of Sask? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. Just a little <laughs> tiny bit? <laughs> no, okay. I'm sorry, but no. We are happy for him. Um, is his job, is his effort, and he has won what is happening in his life. He has indeed. Sesk, your father doesn't speak any English whatsoever. No, Could you doesn't. ask him then, in uh, the native language, um, did, he, did he ever think that you would make it as a professional footballer? I'm em pregunta que si tu et pensaves que algun dia jo faria com a, que arribaria a ser professional del futbol. Home, a veure, de ben petit, que ja se te veien unes diferències bastant grosses respecte als altres nanos, que passa que ho portaves a dins callat i no, no ho podies exterioritzar, no? Però realment sí que se te veia ja que ets una mica diferent als altres, sí? Yes. <laughs> what advice uh, did your mom and dad give you actually when you came to London first? Well, what they, they said is your decision. We can tell you uh, the good things, not the so good things, uh, but we made the balance. It was the good things winning by far. So we came to, to London, we spoke to the boss, we spoke to David Dean, uh, everyone. They were amazing and I thought I could do something in the future for us. It's a good decision. Uh, So, Sesk's mum and dad obviously follow his career closely. But Sesk, like most professional players, was discovered by the most mythical of creatures. It was discovered by a phoenix? No, the football scout. OK. Here's what they look for in a player. Well, the first thing at Arsenal we look for in a, in a player is, see, is football knowledge and football awareness. Can they pass, can they receive... Um... Can they use the weaker foot? Somebody who, who can take control of the game. Si es cert que avui dia la velocitat és... Avui sempre la velocitat és, és fonamental, sigui bé de cap, sigui bé de cames, i la gent que és ràpid de dalt i ràpid de cames pot jugar perfectament a futbol. I'm not sure if it's nature or nurture. Was Dennis Bergkamp born? Was Cesc Fabregas born? Great, I'm, I don't know, but uh, they certainly possess that mental character that makes them great. You can see in first level, Players, normal quality, but great mentality. But good quality, technical, but awful mentality is very difficult to see. The ones you really want it, you don't have to drive them too much. If they want to succeed, it doesn't come easy. It's a really tough industry, you know, it's, there ain't many that make it at any level. The one thing that I would say is that, uh, you know, like you, you watch tapes, you watch uh, people, quality players in the position that you're actually playing. You should uh, listen a lot to your coaches. Uh, you should train a lot. If they're going to fail, fail through lack of ability. Don't fail through lack of effort. Coming up on Nike Live, the Sesc Fabregas show, comedian Paul Kay yanks on about Arsenal. Sesc tackles some tricky questions from the audience. And an aspiring pro footballer goes head to head with Sesc live in the studio. Nike.
you by NikeFootball.com. Sesk. Sesk, let me ask you, when you first came to London, what worried you the most? Was it the crime? Was it the weather? Or was it the wags? <laughs> the weather. Sure. Are you sure? Uh, yes. OK. <laughs> OK. Did you miss having a little nap in the afternoon, though? I still do it. Ah, good, good. <laughs> uh, now, Sesk obviously managed to successfully acclimatise to London, so maybe one day in years to come, when his legs are a bit shaky and he's past his blast, he can move to the States, maybe LA. The Yanks love him. Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Gooner Ball. My name is Ooh Ah Babuna, and I'm gonna soccer it to ya. What a season it's been in the Premier League. Working on a tight budget, our glorious red and white cannon men managed to save an absolute fortune on silverware for the third successive year. What a relief for the goon squad. But take heart of this old football adage. A soccer season is just like a roasting. There's no shame in coming third. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Is it the new Tottenham Hotspur manager? No, it's the young priest from the movie The Exorcist who looks uncannily like him. <laughs> Kesk Fabrigas, a beautiful young man-child boy toddler, has set hearts aflutter this term with his pinpoint passing panache and kooky kicking credentials. Kesk, of course, is from a wonderful country called Spain. I love the Spanish and their food. When I was in Madrid, I had tapas, by which I mean my ass ran like a tap. <laughs> I think it was something I ate. Olay! With his boyish good looks and charming de manure, Kesk has taken over as the new Arsenal pin-up boy, proudly following in a long line of handsome hybrid hunkheads such as Martin Keown, <laughs> Oleg Lesny, and Igor Stepanovs. It might seem trite to call the young Sesk Fabrigas a legend, but Sesk is the real Beef McCoys. On his Arsenal debut, he came up against the bald, bestial, battering ram beefcake basher boy that is Thomas Graveyard Gravison. If Gravison had seen red, Kesk would have instinctively known what to do. Use his shirt like a cape. Olay! <laughs> When it came to moving to London, young Fabby was given a buddy boy to help him settle into the big smoke. It was the Brazilian captain Gilberto. And how did the young Spaniard repay him for this act of kindness? Did he buy him a khaki colored corduroy casual jacket? Olay! Did he take him out for a rack of gooner ribs? Olay! No! He stole his first <laughs> goal off him! What a <laughs> Nice try, Kesk, but you were never going to get away with it. Stealing a Gilberto goal is like stealing a Rembrandt. They're way too rare to go unnoticed. <laughs> oh no, what's this? It's my second yellow cardi. That means I'm off. Bye-bye now. The genius of Bob Booner, everybody. Brilliant. Uh, so, Sesk, how and when did you find out you'd be playing your first Premier League game for Arsenal? Well, I realised uh, an hour, two hours maybe before the kickoff. Uh, really? Yeah, in the small room uh, at the hotel, the, the boss gave the team and I was there. With maybe five or ten minutes to go before kickoff, did Arsene pull you to one side, have a quiet word with you? No, he didn't. And I think. Uh, it's great uh, to have a manager like that. He doesn't put you any pressure. Uh, he just said my name as if, he's, as if it was uh, Patrick or Thierry or whoever. Did you not think at all about the fact that in your first start you were going to be playing against someone as aggressive as Thomas Gravison? Well, uh, of course, I knew and I don't remember who, but uh, told me in the dressing room if he's aggressive, you have to be double aggressive. So I remember... Risky. I remember that. Uh, can you remember your first league goal for Arsenal? Yes, against Blackburn, I think. I think we can have a look. Very easy. Henri's corner, and it's two! It's Gilberto! Gilberto's trying to claim it, but it actually hits Fabregas on the line. Looking at the celebrations, it appears that Gilberto's actually trying to claim the goal. Did you have a little word in his ear after and say, listen, realistically? <laughs> Actually, it was uh, Amanda who came to me, the, the press uh, girl, and said, uh, you know, you have to claim for the goal because they gave it to you. So 
I was uh, I wasn't really thinking about that because we were winning and that's it. So, but as you can see, no one celebrated with me. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have started scoring a, a few more spectacular goals this season, which I think we can have a look at. Fabregas. Yeah! Fabregas joins in. Worth a shot, surely. Oh, dynamite! Shooting opportunity for him. There might be for Fabregas. Oh, another stunning goal to add to the burgeoning Cesc Fabregas collection. Cesc, goal scoring is something you seem to be doing more and more of this season. Um, do you have your favourite goal of the season? <laughs> I've got a feeling you're going to start with the letters A and C. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. It was a massive goal. Unfortunately, we didn't go through after that, but it was a massive goal uh, for the history of the club as well because no one uh, English uh, team beat Milan before at San Siro. So it was, of course, a special goal, but as well, scoring at Tottenham wasn't bad. <laughs> Uh, talking to Europe, a big moment in your career was facing Vieira for the first time. Did you realise at the time how much of a launch pad that would be for your career? I knew definitely uh, before the game. I knew that if I played well and we won and I showed uh, you know some character and and play well against him, I could show uh, you know all the fans and all the people that the boss didn't make uh, any mistake because of course Patrick is is a legend for the club and it was difficult to to believe in a player that seven, is eight, I've 17, 18, so it's always difficult. But at the same time, it was a, a challenge for me. And as I said to you, everything, fortunately for me, everything went well. Uh, now, a lot of you here tonight have posted questions to Sesc on the website, which is great, because it means that we don't really have to bother thinking of any more. As yet, Sesc hasn't responded, time he did. So, have I got Adrian? Adrian, me, there you go. OK, Adrian, ask your question to Sesc. When Henri was on the verge of leaving, what was your reaction? Well, uh, it's a difficult moment for, for the teammates, for the club, for you, I guess, because uh, he was a great player. I have always said that probably the greatest player that this club has had. And it was a shock for everyone. We never expected it. And what can I say? I mean, we miss him a lot, of course, because he's a great guy as well. But, you know, uh, life goes on and we have to wish him all the best where he is. And you never know, uh, maybe we could get him bad one day. <laughs> ah. uh, Ruben. How you doing, Sesc? Hello. Uh, so you're going to the Euros this summer. We're not, unfortunately. Uh, if Arsene could sign one of your Spanish uh, teammates, who would it be? Good question. Yeah, I think you are saying it. Uh, there's a guy called Villa, you, you'll know him. Yeah. He's very good, good striker, good guy as well. Uh, I get on uh, very well with him and I'm sure he could help, uh, he could help us a lot uh, next year. Uh, Greg. Hi, Sus. Hello. Uh, do you have any superstitions or rituals or anything that you do before you play? Superstitions? No, I don't really believe in, in those things. All I do is just I play with a ring that uh, my girlfriend gave me for our first birthday. Uh, and that's it. Yes, I try to play with it uh, always. I never take it off. And, uh, but no, superstition really, no. I'm not this kind of guy who is thinking about uh, this kind of things and stuff. No, I just try to play my game and, and that's it. Give yourself a round of applause. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Knowing the competitive streak that Cesc has, there's one competition that he'll definitely want to win, and that's a footy touch test against a bunch of football hopefuls that Cesc has arranged right here in the studio. He only wanted to face the very best, so he decided to sharpen his opponent's skills first with the aid of the LFCA head of coach education. Guys, you're here this afternoon for the chance to take Cesc Fabregas on in the studio. What we're going to do is we're going to put you under it this afternoon, see what you've got in the locker after 85 minutes. Is your touch still there? Have you still got it? Can you show me it? 
light on. That's what I'm looking for. Are you up for it? Yeah. Let's do it. It's going to be a numbers game. I'm going to give you a number command. You only go on the numbers. Don't worry about anything else I've got to say. You're concentrating on the numbers. Physical and mental agility is what we're going to be testing here. We ready to go? Get yourselves on a white cone and go. Okay, what numbers go then, guys? I told you it's a mental game and you only go on the numbers. Stay awake. One. In you go, nice shot, turn. Good. Two. Good, I'm liking that. Three. Quick feet, keep your heads up. Four. Here we go, we're warming up now. Number five's gonna be a stop turn. Five. Three. Touches, touches, get that ball out in front. Eye contact, all those three balls, good. Six. Come on guys, this ain't a jog now, let's put it in. Six, 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 Why well, you go again, loving it. Let's get busy, you can't switch off now, it's late in the game. If ever I call 10, that's numbers one to nine in order. 10. And rest. That was demanding. Very difficult, non-stop. It looks easy if you see it on the telly or something, but uh, once you're doing it, it's, it's pretty knackering to be honest with yeah. you. That's the most challenging thing I've ever had to do. Matt, <laughs> We're under pressure now, chest, thigh, any part of the foot, kill it dead. I want it dead in here for the first touch. That's the challenge for you now. This is the real bit to see if you're going to go up against this. Good. Good. Good touch. Good boy. Well done. Haven't yet made my mind up. Oh, unlucky. Don't worry about that. Nice touch. Well done. Kill it then. Good. Imagine you're a curtain. The ball's hit you nice and soft. We need to work on your weaker side as well. Kill it dead, kill it dead, don't let me in. Good. It was a difficult call, difficult decision to make, but really I had to make it on more than anything, that stuff under pressure in the box when the ball was fired in. I was torn, it was a hard one, but I think the player that showed the best ability to deal with all types of balls fired in there and get them under control was Ari. So you're the one that I'm putting forward to go up against Cess. Good luck, enjoy it. Well done, all the best. Well done, thank you. Well done, well played, well done. That is tricksy stuff and that's just a taste of the kind of training that Sess does on a daily basis. In order to stretch Sesk and young Ari to the limit, we need the help of a highly skilled goal scoring machine. Should I go get my shorts on? No, I'm talking about real class, my friend. Please welcome right. Danish international and fellow young teammate of Cess, Nicholas Bentner. <laughs> How are you, Nick? You okay? Yeah, I feel good, mate. Thank you. What kind of training do you do to improve the weaker side of your game, then? Um, I do a lot of uh, work on my left foot recently because, um, you know, as I said, the finishing part can always be better. And I know that my left foot isn't as strong as my right, so if I can get that to go, then I'll score more goals. Uh, do you tend to stay behind working on things after everyone else has gone home after training? Yeah, we normally do. And actually, Nicholas uh, is always there, you know, training hard, finishing. And actually, you know, I think he's, he's doing very, very well. Uh, what advice would you give to young aspiring footballers when it comes to practice and improving? What sort of stuff should they be doing? Um, I think you can always start by working hard and always giving in everything you can. And uh, if, if you do that, then you'll always have a chance. Right, time now for a challenge. We saw him being put through his paces a minute ago, but can he transfer those skills from the training ground into the studio? Let's meet the young man with the fancy footwork who's been chosen to take on Sesk in the touch test. It's Ari Taj. This challenge is all about touch and seeing as Andy's got such a sensuous touch. I'll let him explain. OK, here's what they have to do. Sesk and Ari will both stand inside those circles. Nicholas will then have five balls at each of them and they must control the balls within those circles. Failure to do so will count against them and more importantly, make them look a little bit silly. The winner will be decided by Nicholas. You ready, fellas? Yes. OK, shake hands. Good luck. Good. 
Nicholas, when are you ready? Oh, nice. Yes, touch. very good, very good. Nice touch. Bit more now, pace. Pressure more pace. now, pressure. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, don't show off. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was nice. What? Oh, oh yeah. okay. Stay there. Come and have your level with him, by my reckoning. Oh, oh vicious. Is that, vicious is that commentator's man. curse? I do apologise. <laughs> Pressure on Cess now. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll let you have that one. Harry, you got pressure, you've got two left. Come on. Come on. Uh, I, oh! oh! I would have given you that, but sadly I'm not marking you. Put this one up, put this one up. Oh, why does he oh, make it look so easy? Good, I hate, <laughs> hate people that can do that. <laughs> come on, Aaron, come on, come on. Aaron. Oh, that wasn't nice. Oh. Do that oh, for. No. <laughs> right, look. Just, just give it head height. Just give it a one. Give it a one. Right, give it a one. Just pop it. Just give it. Oh. He still, he still didn't make a mistake, did he? Yeah. Okay. okay. Both, uh, both very good. Both very close by my reckoning. Um, who's the winner? Sesk. Yeah. Sesk Bobogas, uh, everyone. Uh, he's my friend. He's my friend. <laughs> and let's do it for Harry as well. Come on. Still to come on Nike Live, the Cesc Fabregas show, Arsene Wenger gives us his critical Cesc assessment. We're graced by the presence of Arsenal legends, past and present. And Matt Lucas plays havoc with Cesc's mind. Please welcome one of the most intelligent, tactical and motivational managers in the country. It's Arsene Wenger! Now, we do want to get Arsene's honest opinion about you, Sesk. Um, and to get his honest opinion is going to be tricky if you're sitting here with us. So I think it's probably best if you just uh, nip off for a little bit. Sesk Fabregas. Hi. Hi. Arsene, good to see you. How are you? I'm well. Good. Not what? busy enough, but I'm well. <laughs> <laughs> what is this young man like to manage? It's a pleasure because he uh, is very respectful. And as he, I think he gave uh, a true image of himself. He wants to do well and he's very dedicated. And uh, there's never a coincidence when a guy makes a career like he's starting just because he's only 21. So, and has played nearly 200 games in the Premier League. That means uh, he's ahead four or five years of everybody else, and that means it's exceptional talent, but not only. It's as well exceptional attitude. How has Sesk grown in the four years that he's been at Arsenal, do you think? He has been uh, consistent in his growing process, and uh, from a very uh, shy young boy, but uh, very determined, who comes in to replace Patrick Vieira, or sometimes plays with him. He became now uh, a guy who has an authority on the pitch. You feel his presence now, and uh, you see that he dominates uh, now the game. So his growing process has been consistent, but uh, very strong. What do you think some of the young people in this room now can learn, you know, ambitious young footballers can learn from watching Sesk? What you can learn from somebody is, uh, who is successful is how much He's ready to give to be good. When you get up in the morning, we're always uh, torn in between being in the comfort zone, say, oh, I would like it easy today. And on the other side, we want as well to be the best. And uh, it is when you get up in the morning to say, no, I don't accept to be too easy today. I want to be the best. 
Um, there's a famous quote from you about players' development being like the foundations of a house with the head being the roof. I, <laughs> I didn't really get it. You didn't really get it. No. But it's, it's in fact very simple. You build a player like you build a house with a basement, you know, the basis of a player is the technique. You get that between 7 and 14 years of age. If you have no technical skill at 14, you can forget it. You will never be a football player. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then the second part is uh, the physical aspect. The first floor is the physical talent of the player. Unfortunately, that is decided between 14, 17, where you see, okay, we'll be quick enough, strong enough. Uh, and then the second floor is the tactical aspect. Does he understand the game? How can I relate to you if you have the ball? Do I understand where to go? And then the final part that is decided at 18, 19 years of age, is uh, how much do I want to be successful? Am I ready not to go to the disco on Friday night because on Saturday I want to have a good game? You're smiling, but you know you went to the disco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, that's the final, the final floor and the, what I call the roof. No, if you have no roof, it rains in. And when it rains in, uh, the house collapses. Listening to that, Arsene, I obviously live in a bungalow. <laughs> but we can help you. <laughs> because on the bungalow, you have a roof. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm beyond help, but thank you anyway. Arsene Wenger, thank you very much indeed. Give it up once again for Mr thank Arsene you. Wenger. Bye -bye. As everyone knows, Cesc's game is the perfect fusion of the physical and the mental. Top flight professional clubs use a variety of methods to help them focus on the mental aspect of the game. And here's another example of Arsene Wenger and Arsenal's forward thinking when it comes to turning Cesc Fabregas into the perfect footballer. Top level football isn't just about physical skill, it's also about mental skill. How to beat your opponent using the power of your mind. Now I'm a qualified mentalist and I've been hired by a number of premiership clubs to show them some of my mind game techniques. The mind plays games on the mind. By following mind game, a number of premiership clubs have improved their collective performances by up to 1% over the course of a season based on, I don't know, 38 games. That's 0.6 of a goal. Chew on that, Fabian Calippo. OK, so I'm now joined by a couple of young up-and-coming Arsenal players who are on the brink of the first team. Uh, with me is Cesc Fab... Fab was it? Fabregat? Fab what? Who? Fabregas. Fabregab. And uh, what's your name? Philippe Sanderos. Philippe Sanderos. And uh, you're... Well, that's a funny accent. Where are you from? From Switzerland. Oh, Switzerland. <laughs> you're... <li> <laughs> hey? I wonder who knit my Toblerone. Yeah? OK, so mental skill. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you this ball and you're gonna run with the ball using your physical skill, yeah? And I am gonna dispossess you using my mental skill. Off you go. Okay. Watch, watch. Look, there is a cow, a large cow. And you can see that I got the ball. That's mental skill. Sorry, son. OK, so I'm here once again with Swiss bloke and we're going to see how mental skill wins the day. Mental skills. My uh, methods are rubbish. No, because, uh, no, because um, I, no, because I've got asthma, you see. So, uh, yeah, I'm an asthmatic. And really, it's actually very immoral of you. You didn't let me play the football. That's left a bit of taste in my mouth. No, that's, you're not a nice person. No, shame on you and your race. No, no, medic, medic. You see, mental skill, the guilt trip. Well, that's just about all we got time for. I think these lads have learnt a thing or two. And who knows, we might just be looking 
at two stars of the future. Unlikely, but... Uh... Here, check, check this ball. Check this ball. Hey, goal! <laughs> Look, there's a goal. Uh, oh, no, we're not that stupid, Cecil. Come on. Is it... Now, I know you're the future of Arsenal Football Club, but let's not... Calm down. Let's not forget the importance of age and experience. We certainly didn't, so we invited two footballing legends that were playing for Arsenal when Cesc here was a newborn. Yes, two men old enough to be Cesc's father, and I have DNA evidence, Paul Merson and Michael Thomas. And joining them is teammate and possible opposition at this summer's tournament, Philippe Senderos. <laughs> Uh, Michael Sesk um, was just two when you famously scored and won the title in the last game of the season at Liverpool. Um, How has the game changed since then? Thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, that was for me. <laughs> it's got f much faster, and you've got to be a, um, the ability of players is so much quicker. And what can we say? Sesk has got it all really at the moment. Uh, how can Sask and Arsenal improve for next season, do you think? I think at the end of the day, I'm not just saying it because I'm standing next to the lad, but you know, he's a, an absolute must. You know, for me, he's Arsenal. You know, I, I don't like saying people one-man teams, like, but you look at Gerard and Torres at Liverpool, if they don't play, they're not the same team, and it's the same with this lad here. You know, and that's no disrespect to the other lads because you know, they're great players, but this lad's a you know, he's different class. Um, Philippe, you've played... Uh... Philippe, you've played alongside and lived with Cesc. How much has he improved as a player, in your opinion? Uh, I remember when he first arrived, he couldn't speak any English, and obviously he learned that now you can see he's got his own show and he, he's speaking fluently. <laughs> you know? I mean, you see the, the difference uh, since he arrived, and, and definitely on the football pitch. I mean, he, he masters the, the, the football pitch and like, like, the, like the best out there. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the summer tournament is nearly upon us. Would you both relish potentially facing each other at some stage? You never know. It could happen. Uh, we hope it's going to be in the final. Then my family can stay at his house. <laughs> uh, talking about looking ahead, what are your ambitions for the future, Sesc? Well, my ambition right now, I just think about the present, really. Uh, now I have a little problem with my growing. I just try to get fit to 100% to play the European Championship because it's a big tournament for the players and for a country like Spain it's always a big event and of course looking forward to next season because we have to win everything. Okay. Now Sesk is obviously a man who obviously stays cool under pressure. In fact he hasn't even broken into a sweat under the studio lights. Uh, but if you want to see exactly how cool a customer this boy is, check out his great ball of fire. And please remember, do not try this at home. PFA Young Player of the Year, Cesc Fabregas, plays in front of 60,000 fans every week. We tested how cool he really is under pressure. Do not try this at home. Okay. Okay. Man and me. <laughs> okay, not okay, good. Fires up. That's it. Okay. Whoa.
we tell you, if that is Arsenal's home kit next season, you have got a brilliant chance of winning the Premier League. Now, you might not know this, but the new Arsenal kit is based on the famous strip used during the glorious 1988-89 season, which saw Arsenal nick the first division title from Liverpool in the final minute at the final game of the season okay. at Anfield. Okay. You're a Liverpool fan, okay, aren't you? Okay, so, yeah. What so, a great goal here's the, that was. So, Thomas! Here, here is the good news. Every member of the audience could win that new Arsenal kit tonight. <laughs> The even better news is that it is all down to Sesk. If he can keep his cool and pass one last devastatingly difficult challenge, they all get sorted out with new kit. And as football is a team game, Paul Michael Philippe and young footy marvel Ari have all kindly agreed to help Sesk out. Uh, now, just to make this challenge all the more tricky, we decided to base it all on one of the areas where Sesk could do with a little bit of improvement. His heading. Now, uh, remind me, how many, how many goals have you scored with the old bunts this roughly, season? Just so roughly. roughly speaking. Just a ballpark figure. Zero. Zero. <laughs> Point proved. Uh, this is what Sesk has to do. Starting with Ari, Sesk will head the ball backwards and forwards to each player before finally nodding it through one of these targets. You've got just one minute and all you need to do, Sesk, is score one goal. <laughs> Sesk. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. I am. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Keep going, keep going. Go on, Sesk. Come on. Go on, Sess. Concentrate now. Go on. Put Come on. Back. This is it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I, I can't. Have... This one. Come on. This is this it. Is Here we go. This for the kit. This is it. This is the one. Yeah! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Well done, sir. Uh, that is all the time we've got, so we'd like to say thanks to our very happy kitted up audience. Yeah. And let's hear it for all our guests tonight to Arsene Wenger, to Paul Mercer, Michael Thomas, Nicholas Bentner, and Philippe Senderas. Uh, the hilarious Matt Lucas, Paul Kay, and of course, Seth's mum and dad. And let's not, let's not forget the man himself, Cesc Fabregas! <laughs> Good luck this summer and next season, and I'm sure all this lot will be behind you. Cesc Fabregas, everyone. And to play us out, it is the amazing Hextatic. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Super fab, 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 super fab